Brothers and sisters, it is important that I remind myself and yourselves to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is only through the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we will be saved from the calamities of this world and the next. More importantly, the calamities of the grave and thereafter. We ask the Almighty to grant us ease the day He takes us away. Brothers and sisters, we have been created in this world not so that we can achieve whatever we want and we desire in this world, but so that we follow the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that when we arrive in paradise, we will then be able to achieve whatever we desire. So anyone who follows his or her whims and fancies in this world shall perhaps be prohibited from achieving what they desire in paradise. That is, if they make it there, may Allah grant us paradise. I mean, but it is important for us to know that those who block themselves from following their desires, whims and fancies that are in contradiction to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed or sent down for them, there is good news that they will be granted the eternal bliss and goodness. So to control yourself for a few years in this temporary world is in fact the duty that Allah has placed upon us. It is part of the test that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen for us to go through. He made us and he created us. And he says very clearly that he has tested us in order for us to worship him alone and for us to pass that particular test by his will. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ He says, I have not created mankind nor jinn kind except that they may worship me. Which means we owe our worship to Allah alone. We will worship Him, none but Him, nobody with Him, neither a stick, nor a stone, nor a human being, nor a saint, nor a grave. We worship Allah alone. We worship Allah alone. That is the test. And from this we realize that if that is the main test, then shaitan's plan would be such that he would come to try and deviate us in this particular matter primarily. And this is why it is very important for us to check our lives on a daily basis whom am I worshipping? Do I worship my maker alone or do I worship the other creatures of Allah? Do I worship my wealth? Do I worship my children, my family members? Whom do I worship? Worship is solely and only for the one who made me, the one who made you. May he grant us goodness and forgiveness. May he grant us steadfastness as well. In life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it very clear to us that we will not get everything we want. If I wish for something, Allah said it did not guarantee that I will have it in this world. Part of my faith is to surrender to the decree of the Almighty when he has chosen something for me or against me. And I need to know Al-Qadr, which means the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is part of my Iman, part of my faith. If, for example, something happens around me that I did not want to happen, the test is how do I react to it? How do I feel about it? Am I in contentment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do I understand that it is an opportunity for me to gain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I can give you a few typical examples. Point number one. Sometimes a person would like to earn so much in terms of wealth and mashallah, they find a job and they begin to work. And after some time, they lose that job and they lose a lot of money. Sometimes they suffer loss because something burnt down or because accidentally or through an accident, someone passed away. That was no coincidence. That was in the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not guarantee that because you have such a high qualification, you are definitely going to be a wealthy person. Some people have high qualifications, they cannot find jobs. Some people have a lot of money, they have no happiness. Some people have a lot of wealth, but they don't have health. Some people have beautiful homes, but their children perhaps may be disobedient. All these tests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should make us better people. 
one of the plans of Allah is that these tests will draw us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not further away. But sometimes people suffer a loss. Say an examination you are trying to achieve from so long and you sit the exam once, twice, thrice and you keep on failing. Remember that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan for you. Work as hard as you can. Leave the rest in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes we lose our job because we are Muslim. Sometimes people look at us with the eye of prejudice because perhaps our name is Islamic or the way we dress is Muslim or the fact that they know we are Muslim. How do we react to that? Do we become hooligans? Do we behave in a way that is not befitting Islam and the Muslims? Or do we surrender to the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and try to do something positive in order Try to do something positive in order to change the mindset of people as best as we can regarding Islam and the Muslims so that the same will not be repeated with our brothers and sisters. Sometimes we react spontaneously. We become angry and agitated to the degree that we don't realize the way we react to something Allah has chosen to put in our lives is very, very unbefitting of a Muslim and it does more harm than good. So we need to calm ourselves. We need to make sure we ponder with sound intellect, go back to the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and learn from his Sunnah, how calm he was, how he reacted to things that happened. He lost his children. How did he react? He lost property. Well, how did he react? He had people who came to fight him. How did he react? May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala grant us all steadfastness and goodness. So it's important for us to realize that in life, the more Allah loves you, the greater he shall test you. As the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Inna Allah idha ahabba abdan ibtalah. When Allah loves a worshipper, he tests him. And he tests him more because idhamul ajri ma'a idhamil ibtila. The greater the test or the greater reward is with the greater test. When Allah has chosen so many tests for you, you need to know that is preparing your paradise for as long as you react to those tests in a way that will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lost his son Ibrahim, whilst he was in his hands and he says, we will not utter words of displeasure, but we say to Allah is what he has taken and for him was what he gave us in the first place. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lesson from that. Brothers and sisters in this life, some people want to marry a particular person and they close their eyes on that particular person to the degree that if they don't marry them, they become depressed and they lose the world. But they don't realize, subhanallah, perhaps Allah has not planned that for you. Perhaps your test is to surrender to the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You may not have exactly what you want. But Allah knows that you will get what you want in the Akhirah if you have surrendered to the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this particular dunya. We have so many issues of people who are unhappy in this world, yet they are Muslimin. The two do not come together. If you are a Muslim, you are happy. If you are unhappy, there is something wrong with your Iman. Because Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaks to us. And he says so beautifully in a hadith that we should be knowing off by heart. Ajaban li amri al-mu'min fa inna amrahu kullahu lahu khair. Amazing are the affairs of a true believer. For indeed, all his affairs are good. They are all good. If something good happens to him, he is thankful. So it's good for him. And if something evil befalls him, or if he does not get exactly what he wants as he wants it, he bears patience. He understands it's the test of Allah and he understands the nature of this world. This dunya, its nature is that I am never ever going to get every single thing I want. From 100 things, I might get 10 things. I might get 20 things. I thank Allah. The other 80 and perhaps multiplied so much, I will get in the, in the akhirah, in the hereafter, in paradise. But I need to surrender to what Allah has not given me in this world surrender to his decree in order for me to get to the Akhirah. This is something of utmost importance because too many people are suffering because Iman is weak. We don't understand the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with us. And sometimes we don't even understand how to react to what's happening around us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us sound knowledge. 
May he make us from those who love one another for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today, we want people to think exactly how we think. Otherwise, this man is not a Muslim. This man is a deviant. This man is this. This man is that. But no two people think alike. That we don't understand. Yes, we should discuss when it comes to bringing people to, towards what is right, towards what Allah has revealed. We discuss, inshallah, based on sound knowledge and at the same time realizing and understanding the gift of Allah to have allowed such a discussion. But if we were taught to just label and stay far away from this man because his eyes are slightly different from mine in that particular case, we will only be spreading complete and utter destruction in the ummah because we will be splitting ourselves into small little groups, not understanding that we are part of one major ummah. We will always discuss matters with knowledge and sound knowledge, and we will always try to bring ourselves together Bearing in mind the difference of opinion has been there from the time of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum all the way down. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. It is important that I spend a few moments to make mention of the sacrifice in Islam. When we say sacrifice, one of the prime issues that come to our minds, the sacrifice of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam of his son Ismail. May peace be upon them all and upon us. Amen. If we take a look at what happened, according to the narrations, the historic narrations and some of the ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was a dream, an instruction to a Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam, to do something that pleased Allah, although it did not make sense to this man. But he knew it was coming from Allah, so whether it made sense or not was besides the point. I have to get this fulfilled because it is wahi, it is revelation. It is from Allah. It is an instruction of my maker. Here it is, and I will get this fulfilled. He was instructed to sacrifice his son. The upbringing of that particular son was such that when he spoke to the son, the son says, Ya abati ma tu'mar. Oh my father, do as you have been instructed. Satajiduni insha'Allahu min as you will find me being from amongst those who are patient. This was the upbringing of the child. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to give our children similar upbringing that when the decree of Allah is mentioned to them, they do not find it difficult to surrender to it. Today, we don't read salah and we expect our children to read salah. We don't dress appropriately and we are saddened when our children dress more indecently than us. So. There are two ways, inshallah, to solve that matter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us solution to that. So Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, when he went to fulfill the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shaitan came to him. When shaitan came to him, he pelted the devil on three occasions, according to some narrations. And later on, he fulfilled the sacrifice. What we learn is so much from it. One is, Every one of us is taught to engage in that sacrifice in one way or another by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not because it's all about a festival of meat and it's all about enjoying eating. It's not only that, subhanallah. The celebration is upon the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and upon putting a knife between you and that which comes in the path of earning the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me give you an example. What is the point of someone sacrificing a ram at the time of Eid al-Adha, yet they have not put a knife to the adultery that they are committing for the last 10 years? What's the point? What is your sacrifice? What have you put to an end in order to achieve the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the sin that you are committing? A person lies every day. And yet they want to slaughter animals and say, enjoy the meat. But brother, your sacrifice is to cut your lies. Some people speak rough to their family members. They have no way of communication. They speak to their wives or sometimes to their husbands or their children or parents or in-laws in such a rough way that they can only be pleasing the devil. Yet they will come to you at the time of Eid al-Adha. Eid Mubarak, Eid Mubarak, subhanAllah. Eid is not only about greeting people. No, it is a bigger much bigger issue it is development of yourself you celebrate upon the fact that you have put a knife 
to that which was displeasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or where it came to the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you made sure that come what may, you adopted that instruction. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. We have people who cannot give up pornography, but when it comes to sacrificing, they are quick to put the knife on the ram and say, you know what? We sent 20 animals to Bangladesh and we sent 50 animals to India and we sent another 500 to Africa. MashaAllah, that is very, very good. But what did you do about that animal within you? You have not yet slaughtered it. Allahu Akbar. What about the pornography inside that you are so hooked to? Cut it out, my brothers and sisters. Cut it out and see how you will enjoy the sacrifice of Eid al-Adha. You are sacrificing something for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People have so much. Some people have really this connection to false wealth that is not theirs. So they want to usurp wealth through robbery or deception. And they get happy about it. Brother, I am a very rich man. How did you get your money? If you did it halal, alhamdulillah, we are happy for you. If not, put a knife to it. That money will not come about with any form of goodness. If we're not prepared to put a knife to it, then subhanallah, how will we earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So this is one angle of looking at that sacrifice. The angle of what am I prepared to sacrifice to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? On one hand, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was instructed to do something that did not make sense to him, nor will it ever make sense to any one of us. Imagine, sacrifice your son. Can it make sense to you? No. Did it make sense to him? No. But it definitely was never a point of question because he knew the source of the instruction. Once Allah said, do this, he said, Sami'na wa ata'na. We have heard it and we have obeyed it. Whereas we have light items to fulfill. No one has asked us to sacrifice our children or to do something barbaric in order to achieve the pleasure of Allah. No, but it is the small things in our life that we are not even prepared to look into. How then are we going to be able to sacrifice them, cut them out for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I hope these few words of motivation can help myself and yourselves. Firstly, look into ourselves. Where am I going wrong? How do I work? How do I address my colleagues? For example, some of us, we cannot read Salah. For what reason? Because we are lazy. We want to sleep. Or we say the timing is, uh, is strange. Some of us don't want to dress appropriately. Some of us have haram relations with the opposite sex in a way that we know it's detrimental for us, for our families, for our well-being. But we cannot put an end to it. And yet, we, every year we witness this Eid al-Adha. What is it all about? It is all about sacrifice. It is all about cutting out that which displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and forcing yourself to do that which pleases Allah, such as your salah, your truthfulness, your dress code. Come on, we can do much better with our dress code. The way we come across one another when we enter the house of Allah, my brothers and sisters, we need to learn something. We smile at one another for the sake of Allah because I share a shahada with you. I don't need to come into the house of Allah and look at people in such a way that my eyes are telling them, what are you doing here, brother? You are not even supposed to be here. If that is the case, where is my iman? What is the brotherhood? Subhanallah. What is the sisterhood all about? We need to make sure people feel like part of one family. That is what the ummah is all about. We will have differences and we will always have differences. But my brothers and sisters, remember those differences to be discussed with knowledge and to be discussed in a way that it is felt that my intention deep down is not to condemn people, but rather to educate them, to come closer to what is right and to do so. It might take long. It's a lot of effort and energy required dedication and strategy so much, but we are impatient. My brothers and sisters, it's either my way or the highway, as they say, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Brothers and sisters, two things were mentioned in today's talk, and I hope we can remember this. Number one, it is important for us to realize the tests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will never get what we want in this world because Allah has kept a paradise where we will be getting what we want. Expect tests in your life. One day your health will fail. One day you will suffer loss in your wealth. 
One day you will suffer the loss of life of those around you whom you love most because everyone needs to go. One day you will become old and you won't be able to walk anymore. One day you will have to prepare for dying because you are so close to death. You may look back in your life and regret. When I had energy, I used it for adultery. I used it for pornography. When I could see, I used to watch dirty things. When I could type, I used to type the dirtiest of things. Now that I'm old, what do I do? Remember, if you have got to old age, you are so lucky that the doors of Tawbah are still open. But a loser is the one who gets right to death and still hasn't turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us through our tests and to make us from those whom when the tests come in our direction, we can accept them with open arms, asking Allah to help us through them and asking him never to test us with tests that will be too difficult for us to pass. The second point I made mention of is to learn from the sacrifice of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, that if he could put a knife to something in order to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it was replaced with a ram. As we know, we should learn that what we have been asked to do is far easier. It is far lighter. Yet we find ourselves dilly-dallying. We find ourselves dwindling. We cannot even sacrifice minor things in order to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I hope and I pray we can become better people. And I hope and I pray we can become assets to our communities, our societies, starting with our own families and family members. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless 